All right, we're gonna uh, move into sort of the enhanced techniques of bladder cancer detection now. So I think I have uh, two ARS questions to start off with. So this first one is just in general, um, repeat uh, resection is indicated in all of the following patients except, and we have high-grade TA, high-grade T1, variant histology, and low-grade TA. And that was a good one. That was a layup, just to see if everybody's out there listening. All right, and we'll do the next one. Blue light cystoscopy with CISVIEW as compared to white light has demonstrated improved detection of TA but not T1, improved detection of TA and T1 but not CIS, reduced recurrence rates, improved overall survival. All right, we got a little bit of a splitter there, but uh, it does detect CIS and uh, it has been shown to reduce recurrence rates, so about half of you got the correct answer. That's number three. So we'll go ahead and review. Uh, some of the objectives of this are to review the components of a quality TUR, limitations of white light cystoscopy, understand some of the technologies that are available for us to do enhanced uh, visualization of these tumors, including new data on flexible office cystoscopy, understand how these impact on uh, the outcomes for patients, including recurrence, progression, et cetera, and then review some of the guidelines um, as mentioned. So we'll go ahead and do that. We all know that, as been shown by some of the previous speakers, that there's a significant amount of risk of recurrence and risk of progression, and it is correlated highly with many clinical factors, including the grade and the stage of the tumor. Um, but what's really not well documented is the risk of recurrence if tumors are, are not properly detected at the time of the initial TUR, and that impacts on patient outcomes. So improvement in the TUR can lead to a reduction in recurrences and a cost savings to the patient and the healthcare system. And studies like one that was shown by Dr. Kamat have shown that at least half of the patients with high-grade disease at the time of a repeat resection will have residual disease, and these include TA tumors that can sometimes be upstaged to T1 and T1 tumors that can be upstaged to T2. And these have significant implications on how we treat these patients. So what are the qualities of a high quality TUR? Um, we think, first of all, they are, this both diagnostic and therapeutic. There is a learning curve to it, and luckily with our high definition cameras, it's a lot different than it was in the old days when you were just looking through the keyhole. But there's no real substitute for a quality TUR and complete resection. You can't make it up with intravesical therapy. So the components include initial mapping of all the tumor sites, uh, complete resection of all visible tumor, sampling of the muscle where it is appropriate, an exception might be a low-grade TA, and then restaging, and most of you have, the message has gotten out, but restage for high-grade TAs, high-grade or any T1s, and certainly this new emergence of the understanding of the pitfalls of variant histology. In the operative report, it's amazingly um, sparse sometimes. Um, I think that we could do a lot better if we had a more of a templated quality note, but it included size, location, and number of tumors, the completeness of the resection, whether there was muscle present in the specimen that you saw because the pathologist may not report it, and the presence or absence of perforation of the bladder at the time of the surgery. So in summary, the elements of a high-quality TUR include visualization, complete resection, muscle in the specimen, restaging where appropriate, and certainly documenting what you've done. And we'll go back to the top now, visualization, because that's really what we're going to talk about today. Is white light good enough? And the answer is often not. Um, there are several studies, and these just two of them, that show that we miss tumor, when you simply go back and look for six weeks later, you find significant tumor. And many times the tumor that you find can change the treatment. There are pitfalls. We, you know, initially diagnosing the cancer can sometimes be challenging. Uh, Dr. Kamat showed a small little area of CIS. That can be hard to see. You do flexible cystoscopy usually in the office, but it's a rigid uh, cystoscopy in the OR, and things can look different. And certainly changes that are impacted on the bladder by intravesical therapy can also confound the visualization. 
So there are several enhanced technologies out there available to you, and these include narrowband and fluorescent cystoscopy. Those are the two we'll focus on in the limited time we have. There are others out there, such as the optical coherence and confocal laser microscopy, but those are really in development right now, and I don't have experience with those. Narrowband imaging allows for taking advantage of the fact that tissues illuminate with light in a narrow bandwidth, and if you focus on blue and green, the spectrum where hemoglobin is absorbed, you can highlight vascular structures, and that's what um, the narrowband technology does. Um, this was a simple drawing, but it made a lot of sense. The little tumors show up as sort of brown tumors on the surface, and the deeper blood vessel capillaries are more green, so it's kind of like being on a shallow beach. And this is what you get when you look at narrowband technology, which is proprietary through Olympus. Um, you get an enhanced visualization of these tumors that sort of stand out as little brown uh, people floating on a sea of green. This, the data for narrowband hasn't been as robust as the data for the fluorescent cystoscopy that I'll show you in a minute, but if you cobble together a lot of the stuff into these meta-analysis such as this, you can see that there's significant increased detection of tumors using narrowband, um, both in per patient and also additional lesions, and on these forest plots, the one to my left here shows enhanced detection, definitely, and it does translate into a reduction in recurrence as shown on the far side. It also can be used for upper tract tumors, so the, the same technology can be used to go up, look in the upper tract, and this ties in with what uh, Dr. Lerner's talk was earlier this morning. Improvements based on some of these small series showing up to maybe 25% of patients benefit from this enhanced detection. You see more tumors or you can maybe more um, uh, quickly eradicate the borders of the tumors because you can see them better. Fluorescent cystoscopy is also a diagnostic tool to aid in bladder cancer detection. Um, this takes advantage of the fact that this photosensitizing um, uh, stuff that's in, instilled in the bladder before patients go back for their procedure is, a, is absorbed preferentially in the tumor uh, compared to normal bladder tissue, about 10 times more. And then when you add a blue light to it, it fluoresces and you can see the tumors. So unlike the Olympus, which requires just the equipment, this requires re equipment plus the um, CISVU kit to instill prior to the procedure. So there's, there's sort of two parts to getting it together for the patient. Blue light cystoscopy in multiple studies, as shown here, has been shown to increase detection of both TA and T1 tumors anywhere from 20 to 30 percent, depending on the series that you look at in these um, large uh, phase three studies. This was the registry study in the United States that got CISVU its approval, and it did show about a 16% improvement in TA and T1 tumors and about a 30% improvement in CIS detection. And of those additional tumors that were detected, about half of them, almost half of them, were high-grade tumors or T1 tumors, the type that you would not want to miss. This looks at the impact of that increased detection on recurrence and has been shown to uh, significantly reduce, reduce the risk of recurrence in patients, um, and it also has delayed time to recurrence on average by about seven months just with the enhanced detection. There have been some uh, meta-analysis studies, including some by Dr. Kamat and some in the audience, that have suggested that this may also translate into a reduction in progression, perhaps due to a more complete TUR and eradication, um, and also time to progression. So that's a little more borderline-y and, and kind of an interesting concept, but it makes sense if you did completely eradicate, for example, a T1 tumor. The AUA guidelines have incorporated enhanced cystoscopy into the mix, and for patients with non-invasive disease, you should offer blue light cystoscopy at the time of TUR if available to increase both detection and decrease recurrence, and the level of evidence is a grade B. In patients with narrow band, um, you can also use it to do the same, uh, but the strength of the evidence at the time of the guidelines wasn't quite as strong, but nevertheless, it's there. This was um, almost published. I think it's published online, but not quite um, in print, but it's coming soon to the journal Urology. But this was a trial looking at, currently we don't have blue light available in the clinic, so this was the blue light um, safety and efficacy trial using fluorescent technology in the clinic um, in a multi-center 17 um, site. Many of you who were here 
probably participated in this as we did. So they would undergo, these are patients who had had a previous tumor, so this was their first cystoscopy coming back after um, non-invasive tumors, and they would undergo surveillance cystoscopy with either white light or blue light. It was randomized, and then if you found something, they would go to the OR and do a confirmatory uh, with the blue light. So again, histologically confirmed. Most of the patients were at risk for some degree of recurrence, so they had multiple tumors, recurrent tumors, or high-grade tumors. Um, the uh, enrollment was about 300 patients, of which about 100 had a significant finding at the time of the office procedure. Then that led to um, 63 patients when they went and underwent their biopsy that had histologically confirmed disease. Uh, most of these patients were undergoing um, a surveillance within six months of their initial tumor diagnosis, and many of them have had multifocal tumors prior to the discovery. Most of them were the type of patients that you would see in your office, such as TA tumors and some CIS. Um, the exposure time on average was a little over an hour for the office-based procedure and a little longer for those um, going to the operating room. And what they found was that there was significant proportion of increased detection in patients who underwent the blue light evaluation. Um, this also, not only was there a 20% enhanced detection of papillary tumors, but about a 30% detection of carcinoma in situ. And then overall, there, we, we saw that additional tumors were seen in up to about 40% um, of the patients. So it's a pretty significant bump. Um, there were some false indications, both with white light and blue light, similar in each group. And overall, there were a uh, few adverse events, uh, meaning that the repetitive use of this um, did not seem to translate into any problems because previous to this, um, CISVIEW had sort of a single use um, approval. These are some of the patient reported outcomes in terms of what it was like for the patients because it does require um, a catheterization prior to the cysto, installation of the medicine, and then allowing for the appropriate amount of time, usually about an hour. But patients felt like it was worthwhile. If they had to do it again, they would, and they'd recommend it to others. So at least from a, a patient perception, it was, it was certainly well received. So the conclusion from this new phase three study was that blue light significantly improves the detection of recurrent cancers and improved the detection of CIS and tumor detection was improved in 46% of the patients. It was safe um, and it can, it, it can be used so uh, a couple of goals, one was just to look at the office-based detection, but secondarily they wanted to look at the ability to detect it in patients who had had BCG in the past, they wanted to look at the repeated use, they wanted to look at its ability to detect CIS, and, and for all of those um, primary and secondary endpoints, uh, they were able to show benefit, so they felt like this was overall a successful study. So in conclusion, for some of the new emerging stuff with enhanced technology and enhanced imaging, I want to remind you that a high quality TUR cannot be overestimated and it's essential to the management. These technologies are available to you or should be soon and are really good tools to help you do a better job with what you already feel like you do pretty well. Both narrowband and fluorescent cystoscopy increase the detection of these lesions that translates into reduced recurrence rates. Um, currently, the narrow band is office-based and in the OR, and soon, I think, not only will the fluorescence be available to you, um, it is available to most of you who have it in your hospitals, but will it be available as an office-based procedure as well. Um, these uh, technologies, given the level of evidence that's behind them, are now supported by guidelines and, and certainly should be incorporated into the management of patients in your practice with non-invasive bladder cancer. And so with that, I thank you and take any questions.